moves on. So uh, welcome to the BID uh, Learning Network uh, webinar. My name is uh, Catherine Miawala, your host. And uh, today we, you know, our webinar is about uh, electronic immunization registries in uh, Tanzania and uh, Zambia. And we'll be talking about the technological solutions from design to deployment. And um, in this uh, uh, particular webinar is uh, being hosted by is being hosted by um, the BID uh, Learning Network, um, which bridges countries and uh, regions as well as global partners that may be interested in strengthening their health data management systems. And this is done through peer learning, mentorship, capacity building, advisory services, and uh, knowledge uh, management. So. Um, actually start uh, with today's agenda, I would like to share some housekeeping guidelines. There is a chat box on your right uh, where we expect you to type in your name and the country where you're connecting from. And uh, in this case, there are a number of you on one connection. Can we please have the number, if you can just share the number, not necessarily the names of the people, but the numbers of the other people who've uh, joined with you. And we're all also requesting that all participants um, are muted uh, so that they don't, uh, you know, um, interrupt the speakers when they're speaking and also have their videos uh, disabled so that we don't affect other people's bandwidth. And uh, we also just uh, would like to mention that uh, there will be a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. So if you've got any questions, we're encouraging you to submit them by the chat box. These will be logged and answered during the question and answer session. And also just to mention that um, this webinar is being recorded and the link to the recording as well as the presentation slides will be shared via the BID uh, website. So like I mentioned earlier, in today's webinar, we'll be hearing from the BID regional mentors about uh, the Better Immunization Data Initiative, which is a project that was funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation work together with the ministries of health in Tanzania and Zambia to address data related challenges um, faced by the immunization programs. And the speakers that we have on board today will talk to us about the digital health solutions development processes in the two countries. So um, to speak to us today, we have Mr. Hassan Mutenga, who's the BID Regional Mentors Lead from Paths Tanzania. And um, he brings with him over 10 years experience working with government institutions across the agricultural, economic and health sectors. And he has been working with PATH for the past five years as team lead for BID Regional Mentorship Program, where he's providing overall strategic leadership and technical support to the Ministry of Health, particularly as it relates to immunization programs on digital health initiatives. Previously, Hassan was a researcher associate at the University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, and he was also m and specialist on the Global Fund Affordable Medicines Facility Malaria Program. Hassan holds a master's degree in public in policy research and a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. Welcome, Hassan. Our next speaker will be uh, Mr. Paul Nindi. Is a system project manager also with Path, uh, uh, with Path but based in Zambia. And uh, Paul is a, an ICT specialist with over 10 years experience in supporting digital transformations and solutions. He is currently systems project manager with Path Zambia where he oversees software development and deployment of immunization registries and other digital health platforms in Zambia. Paul is also a regional mentor under the BID Regional Mentorship Program, providing support on digital transformations at different levels. Welcome, Mr. Nindi. And our last speaker will be Mr. John Richard, um, who is also with uh, PATH. He's based in Tanzania, and um, he's a software analyst, uh, uh, you know, with uh, PATH. And um, he's basically an ICT professional with more than seven years experience in ICT development and uh, with expertise in um, 
IT systems designing and digital health information systems. He oversees the software development team and has managed the Tanzania Immunization Registry development, which we'll be talking about today. And um, whilst doing that, um, he oversaw the integration of the vaccines information management system and its customiz customization. John also supported the deployment of digital solutions to 10 regions in the country. John is also a mentor under the BID Regional Mentorship Program. Welcome, John. And um, basically to all the presenters, you're most welcome. May I now give the floor to the speaker? John? Um, let me stop sharing so that uh, Mr. Nindi, Mr. Nindi, are you able to share your screen? Hello. Yeah, I can hear you, Paul. Yeah, so, yeah, maybe Hassan, you can take it over from here. Yeah, thank if you, you to see Catherine. Uh, thank you, I'm able to see, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, so yeah. thank you very much, Catherine, and uh, thank you for that um, wonderful introduction. So um, yeah. I'll be taking you through the phase three agenda. Uh, one is uh, about read bit regional, which I think I don't have to reiterate because uh, my colleague um, Catherine really did a good job to do that. So I'm going to focus more on the um, second and third uh, agenda of this presentation, which is um, provide you with a background and perspective on how uh, PATH supported uh, Tanzania and Zambia in terms of uh, selecting uh, immunization registry platform. And then uh, my colleagues, they are, they are going to share the, you know, the overall process from the designing um, to uh, deployment. Next slide. So uh, uh, if you can see on the screen that um, in Zambia, they are um, operating immunization registry uh, and the platform are now we call the open SRP. It's a very famous and um, part of the global good solution. And uh, initially we did try DHS2, but again, um, migrated to OpenSRP platform and I'm gonna provide a uh, reason for that. Uh, in Tanzania also the, the immunization registry was built under an OpenIZ platform. This is a um, Canadian based uh, platform, open uh, platform. Uh, which is mainly uh, have been implemented mainly within uh, Canada and USA. So as you can see um, that uh, these are two different solutions, uh, but um, we had uh, some same uh, guiding principles uh, when we are really considering uh, the solution. Uh, what uh, we when we're discussing or selecting solution, we had a number of guiding principle as an organization. One of them is that uh, any solution from these two countries has to be interoperable with the existing systems. It has to be open source, but uh, it doesn't require licensing and corporate uh, payment over time. It has to be holistic, meaning that uh, cover the data needs across uh, you know, the program from a primary healthcare level to national level. Implement the solution in partnership with the existing resource in country in terms of partners, but also you know, government. It has to be country owned in the sense that uh, the government or the Ministry of Health is, has to be able to support it beyond um, a past support. Also reusable in the sense that um, whatever that is going to be developed, any other country uh, apart from Tanzania and Zambia can adopt that solution uh, with the minimum cost and requirement. So really the platform has to be, re any country can reuse it to address some of their challenges. So those were the guiding principle when um, uh, considering uh, what really is technology that should be used. 
And then now when it comes to specific country context, when you see Tanzania that uh, we support the government and the government choose an open IZ platform, this was mainly guided by uh, the five principles you can see uh, guiding consideration in your, in your screen. So the one of the things that we really looked at before uh, deciding or before advocating uh, for the government on what platform to use is the e-health policy uh, and the strategic requirement. So when you go through the Tanzania uh, e-health uh, um, uh, strategy, and this, remember, it is back then, 2014, 2015, uh, it was mainly advocating and strengthening interlinkage of, of uh, systems, you know, that uh, any solution, um, any vertical system has to be interlinked with the, the mother health information system, which was DHS2. Also, it has to you to be standard based uh, and that uh, so that uh, it's easy to integrate with the existing systems. And also it has to go through the existing governance, which was the um, uh, the National E-Health Steering Committee, and then uh, which was under the E-Health entity, which is within the Ministry of Health. So, OpenAZ fit the uh, fit the requirement in the sense that, uh, in terms of design, you know, we're going to see later that uh, it's uh, really interoperable with the uh, existing system from the design point of view, and then. Uh, when you look on the skill set uh, that uh, is needed to uh, really support the platform, then uh, by then Tanzania was able and had the, had the uh, required skill set in terms of the you know software software capacity to be able to support uh, the software beyond um, um, a local beyond the path support. Another aspect in terms of local infrastructure, as you can see, you know that um, most of African country with normally suffering um, similar infrastructure issue, electricity, um, internet connectivity, mobile coverage, you know. So uh, by the design, the platform was able to accommodate these limitations in terms of, um, okay, if there's no electricity, uh, can we have a, 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 a judge? Can the solution sit within a gadget that uh, you know can keep power for a longer time? Can it work offline because of uh, uh, connectivity issue and all those stuff? And then uh, openness, scalability, and usability. Yeah, it was open source and uh, scalable, and also it's open for any other country to really uh, adopt it. And uh, you know. Uh, address the immunization systems. We also had to look on the existing systems or you know, technology landscape in the, in the country before really um, uh, deciding or for what platform. And uh, when we really looked at uh, the existing uh, technology, by then there were really low, limited uh, number of solutions. Like I remember there was uh, one of the CTC database which sits in the health facility, but particular for HIV program, there was a, a TB line listing solution, but uh, none of them, uh, you know, really fitted the requirement uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the, um, the local uh, ICT infrastructure, the immunization system uh, itself in terms of the technical requirement. And then uh, the decision for the government was now let's adopt a different platform and then um, OpenIC was um, um, uh, selected. That process also alone took almost six years to, I mean, six months to, you know, realize through a number of uh, direction meetings uh, with the different stakeholders within the country. So that was for Tanzania. And for Zambia, the situation was more or less the same. So if you look on the uh, uh, Zambia, we initially adopted DHS2 because um, the, um, the e-health requirement, uh, strategy requirement was, the government was solely focusing on strengthening DHS2 as the only platform, our only solution that uh, they were going to use in the country. 
Uh, so uh, we really had to support that idea. Uh, and then, uh, in, unfortunately, by then, uh, the HS2 as a solution was not able to, you know, fit into the country context. For instance, one of the core limitations by then was inability to really work offline. And um, in Zambia, more like Tanzania, uh, internet coverage and connectivity, uh, connectivity was, is very low. So if you have a solution that cannot really work offline, that was a limitation. So uh, we had a number of discussion with the government that uh, given the requirement of the um, immunization registry and the context of the country, by then, DHS2 was not ready to really accommodate the requirements. So we had to really look for another uh, 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 platform. And then now uh, we migrate to OpenSRP. And then uh, as I was for Tanzania, OpenSRP provided uh, the country with the you know, needed strength to address the local ICT infrastructure capacity, technical skill set but also fit in within the existing landscape of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the of the country but also at the same time you know uh, uh, fit in within the e-health policy and the strategic requirement so uh, uh, this is what um now uh, part did in terms of supporting the two government to adopt two different solutions next slide uh, in terms of the challenges, so we really had to look deeper into what are the priority challenges between within both countries, such that uh, you know you can design the technology to address uh, the, 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 the the challenges because um, technology can give you anything depending on what is your need. So if you go through the challenge, you would see they are more or less similar, but uh, the key issue was to really one is strengthening the service delivery in terms of eliminating the inefficiencies with uh, processes that are related to paper-based uh, uh, data collection and reporting. So in, in Tanzania, they call it a complex data collection tool, but also another issue is low data use capacity. So you know there was less uh, use capacity of data, and um, one of the key issues the access to data was very limited. And then, so one of the things that the solution need to address is bring data into, you know, make the data easily accessible to healthcare workers across all the countries. Um, and then the other is visibility of our consumption and supplies. So or if you look from uh, in both country, you know, the national level, regional level, wanted to know what is happening downstream, how many children were immunized, what is the stock level, so that they can take immediate action, uh, and then uh, you know, be able to address issue as they happen, rather than waiting for a month long to be able to see issues during uh, uh, reporting. And uh, another uh, critical challenge was the inability to track uh, default. So in both in two countries, uh, there was a desire to be able to track individuals, uh, children, rather than, you know, saying we've reached 90%. Now we wanted to see what are the 10 remaining percent, who are they and where they are, where, where do they live so that they can be uh, really tracked and be uh, given the needed immunization. So the design of this solution were really informed by these challenges that, uh, you know, uh, country prioritize uh, in terms of, uh, you know, addressing and strengthening the immunization system. I'll pass over to my colleague, uh, Paul, to give uh, us more information on the Zambian Electronic Immunization Registry. Over. All right. Um, thank you very much, Hassan, for that um, uh, overview. And I think I'm just going to focus on the Zambia Electronic um, Immunization Registry, which is, um, um, yeah, sometimes known as, as ZIA. Okay, so to begin with, uh, let me just give an overview as well as uh, how, how the coverage uh, looks like. So um, the Zambia Electronic Immunization Registry basically is a system that is um, that tries on a platform uh, called OpenSRP, as um, Hassan has uh, said, 
and it has a focus on tracking um, the healthcare services provided to children. Um, uh, this includes uh, immunizations as well as um, 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 as well as tracking the, uh, the nutritional aspect of um, of children under the age of five. Um, and I must state that um, this this system was designed for um, frontline health um, workers, uh, which includes and the nurses, environmental health technicians, as well as uh, the community health workers. So, um, in terms of coverage, um, this is the system that has been uh, deployed in in southern province, which has 13 districts, and then um, um, it has a population of over 1.8 million. And then um, um, one thing to note is that um, it covers over 300 health uh, facilities. Then this number keeps um, growing. Um, one thing to note is that uh, the ministry basically did receive um, some bit of funding, which will enable them to get to another part of the country. So that's um, that in terms of um, um, that uh, that coverage. In terms of the, uh, the registrations, we have um, like 140 children that have been registered um, so far, 140,000. And then we have uh, over a 1.5 million uh, vaccinations so far. So that's just um, a bit of an overview on the ZIA. Um, yeah, on the ZIA. So in terms of um, the design, uh, looking at the solution systems uh, architecture, um, so one thing to mention is that, as I said, this is something that is powered by um, open SRP, but then there are also other popular open source platforms which um, it works hand in hand. So you can see we have the Rapid Pro there. Um, we also have the Open MRS. Um, all, all these are like open source softwares uh, that um, it's working along with. And then um, the simple setup is that uh, you we have a tablet that is uh, placed at the facility which gets to capture the information. And then uh, this information gets to be transmitted um, via internet to uh, the servers that basically are sitting at the Ministry of Health. So from this, um, from, from, that, uh, uh, from that component, you, we should also be able to connect to DHIS2. Um, if there's anything that is in place in terms of uh, an integration layer, you should also be able to transfer that information to that kind of a layer. And also there's also a data warehouse where you can do monitoring of information that is either coming from the facilities. So um, at the community level, basically what occurs there is a phone. So a, a simple phone should be able to do SMS registrations, reminders, as well as um, uh, vaccinations. So in a nutshell, this is how the system looks like. And those are some of the core components that make up um, the solution. So in terms of the key skill set that we um, um, that we had in, in terms of developing uh, that system, I think one thing to note is that um, we 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 had business analysts that basically uh, uh, were there to do the the business processes. So really getting to understand uh, what happens um, within the facilities. Um, so this involved a number of meetings, um, including just reviewing the documentation that. Um, that they, they, maybe the nurses or the people on the ground uh, use. Um, we also had programming skills. Um, so this means that um, you would want to have um, Android mobile app system development skills. Um, and then I think the main, the main um, languages that were being used in, in this the system development uh, include Java, JavaScript, Python, um, yeah, as well as um, other others that can be similar to this. Um, so for the the other aspect is the data warehousing knowledge, because um, as you saw from the architecture, you have um, 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 a repository point where you can actually be able to do um, an analysis or be able to do monitoring um, on what's happening in the in the facilities. So that's the key knowledge. I think really having those ETL uh, scripting or Postgres um, SQL knowledge is, is quite, quite important because this is what basically uh, creates this system. And then um, it's also important to have a database um, server administration skills. 
because at the moment this system runs on 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 CouchDB. Uh, that's a database uh, system that it's running. And then for the tablets that uh, the facilities use, this SQ um, Lite, which is um, on those on those tablets. So for that for that local storage of information, uh, that's the thing that we use. So so these are the set. These are the set of skills I think you'd want to have, uh, especially if it comes to customizing um, this kind of system. So um, looking at the functionalities as well as the core solution, I mean the core solution components. So the thing is, uh, the system is has four many components. Um, I think the first aspect is the service, which basically um, includes um, the registration of children. So being able to register, to register the children um, that come over to the facilities. And, and then um, under that aspect is that unique identification aspect. So each child is usually given um, their own um, unique ID, ID so for easy identification. Um, and, and this can be used in wherever they go. Um, so the system is also able to do vaccinations under that particular component. So. Um, the vaccine schedules that gets to be um, coded in the system and that can be followed for that particular child or record. So then the other component is the stock control, um, which basically is, is used to record all stock activities. Um, this include receiving stock, um, issuing stock, or maybe making any sort of adjustments. Uh, but then one, one other interesting thing um, around this is that it's got um, that supply forecasting um, capability, so you should be able to plan for your uh, your subsequent um, activities, maybe in the next month, month or so. There's a component of the growth monitoring, um, which uh, enables you to do, you know, weight recording, able to do uh, growth charts, um, um, as well as uh, the Z score calculation. So it basically gives you the nutritional status of a child and should be able to follow up if there are any uh, relapses. Um, the other component is the reporting, which um, which is, is which is I think one of the major components because you've, you've got so many in-app um, reporting um, components which range from daily tallies and also the HIA two reports, um, which are usually done on a monthly basis. Then the other interesting aspect is also being able to track the dropouts. Um, so this component basically I think enables you to be able to do even um, uh, the default tracing. So that's that uh, in terms of the core solutions. Um, so I'm just going to go through the um, capabilities, um, but I think one thing to mention is that these are things that um, I, I reflection of my previous slide. So in terms of the daily tallies, uh, the monthly reports, the dropout reports, all those go into the uh, reporting component. Um, so there's also some offline functionality, which the system is, uh, is capable of, of, of doing. So in, in a case where you don't have internet connection, you still can be able to use, um, use the system. So um, the other components in, include um, SMS functionality, as well as growth monitoring, as I already uh, mentioned. So in terms of the, develop, um, the, the development uh, timeline, um, so I've just um, shown here um, kind of a timeline of what um, of, the, of, of the major events that um, we went through in terms of developing this solution. So um, one thing to mention is that uh, we use the Agile system development method. So when we had the requirements, we basically um, uh, broke down these requirements into milestones. And each of those milestones that we achieved, we had to release um, um, an update, which, which, was, um, um, which was fed to the facilities. Uh, but then before that could happen, we would do extensive tests, um, maybe a period of one or two weeks to ensure that um, whatever we're deploying to the system is, um, is, is solid. So you can see, we, these are some of the major um, activities. Um, we had the kickoff, I think from January 2017, you can see I just put in a green line there, which goes up to 2018. 
this was like the development um, development period. And most of the uh, components that are uh, outlined here um, are some of the rollout um, um, activities that we we're doing. Um, so we're, we're developing at, at the same time um, deploying the system. So some of the lessons that we learned through this development process that um, we need, you need to design um, a system with the user in mind. Um, so they say that if you develop a system in the boardroom, um, most likely it's just going to be used in the boardroom. And then um, one other thing is that we learned that you need to involve all stakeholders at different levels um, um, when getting feedback to avoid the back and forth because that can be, that can be cumbersome. And then um, it just ensure that um, you are building, um, you are building with a building local capacity. So that's one thing that we learned um, over time to say um, it's important from onset just to ensure that we have a local capacity as you're doing uh, the developments. Um, one last item is that you need to fail fast. Um, if something is not working, um, um, maybe just look for an alternative. And I think in the case where we had a, a system, first of all, it, it couldn't meet the requirements, so we had to switch quickly. So that's that about the, uh, the timelines. In terms of um, how the deployment was going through, um, as I said, this just depicts on, uh, on that same development timeline. You can see we have the design, which was just taking place for about two weeks. And then um, we, we had to adapt and, um, and pilot for 10 weeks. And then the rest of, um, uh, of the time period is that we would update the system as we go on. Um, the way we were getting onto the facilities that we had like three visits to the facilities, um, which we are calling touches. So we had touch one, touch two, touch three, and touch four. And then each of those would focus on certain components like touch one would do just introduction and change management, touch two would do training or maybe handover over, over the system, touch three, the system goes live. And then maybe touch for those are like just follow apps just to ensure that things are running uh, well. Um, in terms of the challenges as well as the operational, yeah, the limitations and the lessons learned. Um, in terms of the operational challenges, um, I think one thing we noted is a, is a sync challenge from remote areas. So users um, basically have to be encouraged to sync at least once in a month, otherwise. Uh, the district may not have a view on what's happening at um, at the facility at the facility level when they check the dashboards. Um, there are other things like abuse of bundles, personalization of tablets, and damaging uh, tablets. Uh, that is one thing that is common. But I think a lesson learned out of that is that um, from the onset, just ensure that the, the people that are championing this are the uh, are the people at are the are the people that are supervising them, um, and then. Um, and with more sensitization, uh, this gets to drop drop down. Um, staff retraining due to movements, uh, this is also common resistance to change. Um, every system usually comes with uh, its own challenges in terms of people resisting to use it. Uh, so just a lesson learned is that um, when you're doing these things, just ensure that there's a change management program uh, in place to ensure that uh, uh, all issues are addressed. No use of the system due to low or lack of motivation. Um, that does um, that does happen, but um, um, in, in, in those cases, I think the change management also come, comes in handy to also to, to to make people see the value in the in, in the system. Um, prior systems running uh, that is also a common thing. So if it's moving from um, a paper register to a digital system. There's really one lesson learned is that there's really need for something to be in place, uh, maybe a plan which which outlines um, how or when we are going to to do that. Otherwise, it's, it's a situation where you get to overload the user and then um, uh, the system performance becomes a challenge. Um, system limitations: um, first time login usually would require internet connection, and then I think the system doesn't support ordering vaccines from the district nor does it track batches or lot numbers um, that is on the vaccine component. And then um, the other thing is that um, uh, maybe the specifications on the tablet may matter um, due to the, the, the screen size. 
that is for the tablets that sit at the facility level. So I was going through some of the um, lessons learned as I was going through the um, operational um, uh, challenges. So um, I'm going to hand over to my colleague in, in, in Tanzania, who is just going to go through the Tanzania Electronic Immigration Library. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, I will, now, I will now take you through uh, Tanzania Immunization uh, Registry, a uh, solution being used in Tanzania. Uh, next, uh, Paul, next please. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, Tanzania Immunization Registry, uh, uh, basically this uh, is a mobile app uh, based application uh, that was uh, mainly uh, to uh, help uh, healthcare workers uh, to be able to register, store uh, application also tracks some of the uh, other informations like uh, uh, child uh, nutritional status, uh, allergic reaction, and 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 uh, stock levels. Uh, in terms of coverage, uh, so far uh, application is being used in. Uh, 2,685 health facilities in, in 10 regions uh, and about 1.3 million children uh, ha have been registered in the system. Uh, next, please. Now let's uh, look at a uh, uh, platform that was used to uh, develop TIMA. Uh, TIMA was, uh, was built uh, using an open uh, source uh, a platform called uh, OpenIZ, uh, Open Immunize uh, platform. Uh, uh, this is a community-driven and open-source uh, solution, uh, which really provides a robust, scalable, and extensible uh, solution which, uh, different uh, application can be built on. Uh, OpenIZ was developed by uh, Mohawk, uh, it's a center uh, based in Canada, who are also a key community. Yeah, in terms of OpenIZ solution uh, provide, uh, at the middle one, the, uh, that's an OpenIZ, Open Immunize, uh, that's a, a core component of uh, OpenIZ uh, solution. Uh, which is uh, responsible for maintenance of individual records, uh, or I mean individual immunization records. Uh, it also provides uh, scheduling services, uh, it forecasting services, uh, as well as uh, uh, integration with uh, uh, other uh, uh, applications. Uh, another component uh, that is available, in, uh, that's offered by OpenIZ uh, is uh, OpenIZ uh, BI products. Uh, this uh, represents uh, uh, business intelligence uh, application uh, that uh, can be used for reporting and analytics. And then another component is uh, OpenIZ applications. Uh, this represents uh, applications such as uh, electronic medical records, uh, mobile application, as well as um, uh, mobile inter interfaces. Uh, and then there is uh, another component is uh, OpenIZ administration. Uh, this is uh, anticip uh, this was anticipated to be used by uh, uh, system administrators to, uh, to perform uh, administrative functions uh, like uh, managing facilities, uh, registering users, uh, uh, managing roles and, 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 and groups. And then another component uh, is uh, uh, external system. Uh, so this one represents an unclinical uh, uh, solution uh, that uh, 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 that OpenIZ, uh, OpenIZ, uh, immun uh, OpenIZ solution is antif anticipated to interoperate. Uh, and then the other component is uh, 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 interoperability component. Uh, OpenIZ also can, uh, uh, can, pub uh, can uh, publish data or uh, consume data from uh, any external system uh, using uh, uh, interoperability uh, uh, solutions. Uh, next, please. Next, Paul. Uh, okay. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, components that are uh, uh, that build up uh, Tima, uh, these components uh, were leveraged from uh, OpenIZ uh, components, uh, starting with the mobile user interface. Uh, this was designed uh, using a dis uh, uh, disconnected client. 
uh, and this is used by uh, front-end healthcare workers uh, to perform registration of children, manage uh, immunization uh, information of the children, as well as uh, managing uh, stock, uh, uh, stock data. Uh, uh, interface also offers uh, online and offline uh, functionality, uh, which uh, synchronizes uh, uh, data wirelessly to a central database. And then we have uh, another component is a web user interface. Uh, this is, uh, is to be used by uh, district officials uh, to manage uh, facilities in their own district. As well, uh, it also provides dashboard which allows DIVOS to, uh, I mean, district officials to, uh, to uh, see stock status of, of their own districts, as well as to run uh, uh, reports and export in different formats. Uh, the another, another component is uh, admin user interface. Uh, uh, this is also a very useful component for, uh, for, uh, for TIMA. Uh, this is allow system administrators to uh, to perform administrative functions. It also allow them to uh, to also mitigate uh, some of the security scenarios. Uh, another component is uh, uh, open uh, HIE. Uh, Tima also can uh, interoper uh, in can interoperate with uh, another other applications such as uh, Vims, uh, uh, DHIS2, uh, where it can. Uh, can uh, can share out as well as take out uh, i mean the information from uh, those system uh, using uh, open hie but for our case we used open him uh, uh, i mean as a interoperability uh, uh, layer uh, then another component is a transactional database uh, a team a transactional database uh, and then the other one is a data warehouse a database a uh, data warehouse is uh, separated from a uh, transactional database uh, so that uh, uh, district officials uh, can be able to uh, view reports uh, without uh, introducing uh, 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 <coughs> stress to a uh, central database. Uh, next, please. Uh, next, please, Paul. Uh, now let's look at uh, some of the technologies that was used to build uh, TIMA. Uh, there are different uh, technologies uh, that were used uh, as well as standards uh, so nothing was uh, re nothing was invented uh, most of them are the, are the existing uh, uh, solution existing uh, technologies in the market uh, mobile app interface is written in uh, javascript and uh, html5 uh, whereby uh, web app and i mean the uh, web user interface and admin user interface are written in asp.net uh, using AMC, uh, MVC4 uh, framework. And then uh, core uh, IM, uh, immunization information system uh, is written in uh, Microsoft uh, uh, .NET. Uh, in terms of standards, uh, there are different standard, standards that were uh, reused. Uh, uh, one of them is HL7 uh, Fire Interface. Uh, this is for, uh, for sharing uh, clinical data, uh, as well as uh, GS, uh, GS1 uh, a business messaging uh, a standard uh, for sharing uh, stock information with uh, with uh, another uh, application being used at the district level. So, uh, so in terms of skill set needed uh, uh, for developers to be able to uh, uh, maintain application uh, or to customize, they should at least ha have experience uh, working with JavaScript, HTML5, uh, database is uh, written and uh, database engine used is post uh, gray SQL, so at least they should also have experience with uh, uh, object related uh, uh, database and then for sharing uh, uh, i mean for writing apis for sharing information with uh, other uh, system they should at least have uh, experience with uh, rest apis next uh, Next, please, Paul. Uh, now let's look at uh, uh, some of the core features of, of Tima. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, client management. Uh, with client management, uh, this offer, uh, 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 I mean, a registration screen, uh, searching and up updating record. Uh, the other 
uh, another feature, uh, core feature is uh, immunization management. Uh, with uh, immunization management, user can administer vaccines, uh, can uh, schedule uh, upcoming visits, as well as tracking uh, adverse uh, effects following immunization uh, uh, using a uh, lot numbers that are recorded during, uh, during vaccination. Uh, another feature is, uh, uh, that uh, Tima offers is uh, stock management. Uh, at, uh, at facility level, users are also able to manage their own stock, uh, such as ordering stock, adjusting uh, stock, as well as uh, doing some cons uh, stock uh, uh, reconciliation. Uh, also, Tima has uh, uh, provides uh, uh, some uh, useful reports uh, for analytics uh, uh, that will, uh, that has uh, inbuilt uh, decision support, uh, such as color code. Uh, uh, to help healthcare workers to do some, uh, uh, I mean, to be able to uh, to evaluate their performance uh, to improve uh, service uh, delivery. Uh, the other uh, component is uh, growth monitor uh, monitoring. Uh, so, uh, team also uh, help uh, healthcare workers to uh, to be able to record uh, ch uh, children' weight uh, uh, to 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 assess their uh, nutritional uh, status. Next. Okay, uh, now let me uh, lead you through uh, uh, team development uh, uh, roadmap. Uh, uh, actually, the development took almost uh, uh, 12 months. Uh, it started back in 2016, and then we gone live uh, in, 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 in 2017. And then in between, there are some of the events uh, that uh, happened. Uh, so after vendor was, uh, uh, was, was, was selected, um, so for Tanzania, what we did is that uh, the selected vendor was, uh, after, uh, I mean, selected vendor was uh, from uh, Moak, as said before, uh, from Moak College. Uh, uh, then it was also decided that they should also work, work with uh, local vendor uh, to, uh, uh, they, sh uh, they should also capacitate a local vendor uh, to, uh, uh, so in case whenever uh, there is any support needed uh, due to that uh, uh, time, I mean time differences, uh, we'll be able to get uh, uh, immediate support from uh, local vendor. Uh, so after vendor was selected, uh, an inception meeting was uh, conducted uh, where developers and uh, 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 stakeholders uh, were brought together to agree on some of the roles and, uh, and responsibilities uh, communication channels, as well as uh, for a uh, team to, uh, to envision kind of uh, product that they're expecting. Also for developers to familiarize with uh, business uh, roles, as well as, as clinical protocols that applies to Tanzanian uh, context. Uh, and then uh, uh, development, I uh, mean application was uh, delivered using agile uh, uh, scrum uh, methodologies, uh, which uh, gives more power to um, and flexibility to uh, to users uh, to decide what uh, kind of uh, product they want. Our development tool was uh, divided in two weeks iterations, uh, and then each release was tested uh, uh, independently using an in internal team and a UAG. Uh, basically, UAG is a, a user group uh, comprised of uh, uh, healthcare professionals uh, from. Uh, different uh, health, uh, level, health, uh, different uh, level of health system, uh, who really play, uh, played a key role uh, in system testing and design of uh, 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 intervention as a well. whole. After RRC2 was uh, released, app was tested in, uh, was piloted in uh, uh, six facilities in Arusha uh, for almost eight weeks. Uh, and then uh, facility selected, uh, uh, there were different uh, setup. Uh, one of them, we made sure that a solution can so can be uh, tested or uh, in, in different uh, environments, such as uh, environment with good internet connection, uh, environment with moderate internet connection, as well as uh, uh, environment with uh, with no uh, connection at all uh, to uh, to test uh, uh, application behavior and, and performance. Uh, and then 
after a piloting application in uh, six uh, facilities, uh, we go live uh, in uh, July uh, 2017. After there and then, after rolling out the application, uh, vendors also keep on uh, providing system maintenance to correct uh, some faults and errors for six months. Uh, for in terms of rollout approach, uh, uh, on-site training was, rollout approach was uh, used in Tanzania, whereby uh, uh, TOTs from uh, each district were selected, and then those TOTs go uh, uh, at the facility to, uh, to provide uh, training. Uh, next, please. Uh, apart from uh, features uh, or functionality I shared before, the uh, application also uh, offers uh, different uh, capabilities. Uh, one of them is uh, during synchronization between a mobile app and server, uh, data uh, is compressed and encoded. Uh, this uh, process uh, uses uh, less uh, internet uh, uh, bandwidth. App also offers on device and server backup. Uh, of the data, uh, so in case uh, app crashes, uh, uh, data can always be uh, retrieved. Uh, also, uh, app can work offline uh, for weeks and months and uh, synchronize data with a central database uh, when a connection is uh, available. Uh, also, uh, application can uh, uh, <clears throat> provide a secure and encrypted uh, local storage, uh, so data is always uh, safe offline. Uh, maybe in case uh, a, a device is stolen, uh, then nobody will be able to access uh, uh, data. Uh, application is also interoperable, uh, I mean it can uh, communicate with uh, uh, other applications that are uh, uh, available in, in the country. Uh, also, uh, application do provide a simplified and automated uh, system upgrade uh, so uh, no need to have uh, physical access to devices uh, uh, up the upgrade is done from uh, uh, from central level uh, application also has a built-in uh, bug and issue reporting uh, for healthcare workers to be able to report uh, some of the issues that uh, they have experienced and then uh, when they do send those uh, uh, bug, i mean the bugs uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean uh, logs are also shared with the software administrator to be, uh, to be able to investigate and see how uh, they can uh, uh, provide uh, support to, to healthcare workers. Uh, next. Uh, now let's uh, uh, look at uh, some of the limitations. Uh, uh, so in case uh, maybe uh, uh, any kind, uh, maybe uh, uh, sorry, uh, back to another uh, to uh, okay, thanks. Uh, so in case uh, maybe uh, someone would like to take application and and and, and uh, they want to customize, uh, they can also look at some of the uh, limitation which are, are really based to uh, uh, Tanzanian context. Uh, they can also see if they, uh, it applies to their uh, context. Uh, one of the limitation is uh, uh, always first login uh, requires internet connection uh, to for up to synchronize with uh, with server, and then after uh, uh, connection is established, then user can uh, always uh, log uh, login offline. Uh, also, other limitation is uh, as I said before, uh, application is integrated with uh, uh, Vims. I mean, Vims is a vaccine information management system uh, used at uh, a district level for managing uh, a supply chain. Uh, so when a stock is sent from a district level, uh, users are always not uh, being notified. Uh, they have to go and uh, access the system uh, time to time if to, if to see if there is uh, uh, any stock that is uh, dispatched. Uh, another thing is uh, uh, despite application working offline, uh, but facility with no internet connection, Uh, they will need to find a place where the uh, uh, application users who are this, at this level can be able to see uh, what is going uh, on at the facilities. 
And then uh, the last two uh, limitations, those are, are more of not uh, of, of uh, system based. Uh, it's more of uh, uh, in terms of system usage. Uh, for uh, what we observe in terms of always needed uh, due to the movement of uh, some of the facilities are relying on uh, specific healthcare workers when it comes to system usage, which really becomes a problem when that particular uh, user is not around at the facility. Okay, thank you very much. This is uh, uh, all that I wanted to, uh, to share with you. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much uh, to the speakers for today. Um, well, now we've heard for ourselves those were two countries in the same region looking at um, electronic immunization registries and uh, they took um, almost they were looking at the same challenges almost the same challenges but took two different approaches one started off earlier than the other so um, in terms of uh, now we're opening up uh, for the for the questions thank you so much to the speakers uh, maybe I can take in the questions that uh, I can start off with the questions that uh, were logged in the chat box. Hassan, I noticed that you uh, responded to some of the questions, but I think it would be good. Uh, let's see if we can respond for the benefit of those ones who are probably concentrating on the on the on the presentations. There was one question that came from uh, Abdul, and I think it was um, addressed to you, Hassan where he was asking, was there any particular reason why Tanzania and Zambia selected one solution over the other? And in this case, he was um, uh, referring to the open IZ and the open SRP. And um, related to that, another question from uh, Jenny, who was asking to say, it sounds like Zambia did the electronic immunization registry a few years after Tanzania. What was done differently because of the learnings that were applied from uh, uh, Tanzania specifically. And um, I think here she's talking about you know, the alternative platforms. Um, is there anything that could have changed based on the lessons learned uh, from Tanzania? Hassan, are you able to respond to those two questions? Yeah, sure, but uh, I think I have to drop off in the next two, three minutes because I have another meeting. So uh, for the first question, uh, uh, why we opted for open IZ and open, um, uh, open IZ and open SRP. So I think I, one of the uh, uh, response that I provided, I think, uh, is uh, the platform were mainly informed by the country context and the country needs. Uh, so for recent, for Zambia, they were more into uh, integrating the existing system. I mean, for Tanzania, the focus was to integrate vertical programs into DHS2. So in terms of uh, whether we can use uh, which platform, then um, uh, the decision was open. You can use either OpenSRP or OpenIZ. So uh, finally, looking into country-specific immunization system requirement, Open uh, IZ platform provided more robust uh, re requirement to fit the, the Tanzanian context. As for Zambia, uh, uh, as I've said earlier, the government were, was strictly stre aiming at strengthening uh, DHIS2 uh, rather than adopting a third part application uh, or whole platform like uh, Open SRP uh, or Open IZ. And then uh, given the fact that DHS2 was not ready to, to go to um, facility level due to its limitation, open, I, open SRP offered a more, um, I would say, feasible option because uh, by then I think there was a lot of experience about integrating open SRP and DHS2. And uh, then it seems and looks more or less easy to adopt open SRP because it's you know, had proven to or already being able to uh, integrate with uh, DHS2. But another uh, key decision to take is always um, should avoid the single point of failure, meaning that um, if we were to adopt open SRP in Zambia and Tanzania, and then uh, for some reason, for technical reason, open SRP couldn't scale, then it was a loss for both countries. So there was a benefit of trying different uh, solution so that uh, you avoid um, the single point of failure. Um, the second question regarding um, um, uh, 
lessons learned from uh, Tanzania being ahead to Zambia. I think that was uh, is critical <laughs> and provided a lot of lessons to Zambia, particularly on the implementation aspect where uh, deployment strategy, testing strategy. So really a lot of lessons were learned from Tanzania to make sure that um, Zambia doesn't really fall on the same trap as uh, Tanzania did. So uh, if we, they want, we want more specifics, I think there's um, an encyclopedia of lesson, le lesson learned, which can provide you more specific lessons about what was learned in Tanzania and Zambia and how those were applied during the development and deployment stage. Over and out. Thank you so <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Hassan. Thank you for taking time off your busy schedule to come and speak to us. I know you have to rush off, but thank you very, very much. And we know you'll be available to take on any questions that will probably come via um, the bid, um, uh, you know, Google groups. Thank you so much. Um, maybe we can just continue with the rest of the questions. Um, there was another question. I think this was uh, uh, addressed to Paul. Um, on, uh, this one came from Adil, and he was asking about the digital architecture. And he was asking if there's any data cleaning which is done, and if, it, if yes, at what stage? All right. <clears throat> All right, thank you very much um, yeah, for that question. So um, in terms of a stage in the architecture, um, the, um, well, there isn't um, a particular stage in particular, um, but I think one of the things that was put into consideration is around the data um, capturing mechanisms. So each, I think um, for, um, I mean, for, for the forms that are used to capture the data, they have these controls that um, kind of uh, prevent um, errors from, uh, from happening. And then um, also there's some edit, um, editing rights that are given um, for a period of time for them to be able to um, um, maybe correct the data if there's any, any sort of um, errors that may be detected. Um, but other than that, um, we also have that possibility to be able to um, <clears throat> clean up that data using the open MRIS um, platform. Um, so there you should be able to see the records and be able to, um, to make any sort of um, um, cleaning if there's need at that particular stage. So I'd say um, at, the, at the collecting point, um, as well as uh, at the back end, uh, we should be able to do those um, um, those things. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Then there was another question from Yan. This one was talking about the required skills, and I think uh, both um, the speakers uh, um, spoke about um, the required the, the skills that are required for um, designing and um, deploying EARs. And um, he was asking if um, under these required skills, there were some that were available from the Ministry of Health or were they contributors, contributed by the partners um, in the countries? He says so because he believes that not all the countries have got the capacity to manage without some level of support from the partners. Paul and John are able to respond to this. We're talking about um, the required skills. Were, there, were these two readily available from the MOH? Or did you get any partners on board to assist? Yes. Um, so, um, yeah, that, that's a very good question um, again. Um, so I think looking at the skill set, um, so we had a challenge, I think, in terms of um, having the skills um, with the developers, that is the programming skills, being able to code the system. Um, um, with those, we really didn't have that from from the Ministry of Health, um, um, but I think the, what what we've seen is that um, I think the Ministry of Health are now seeing a need for um, for having that kind of um, uh, having that kind of skills in in place, so that if there are any sort of changes um, that needs to be made, uh, they should be done um, uh, at the ministry point of view. So in in terms of um, that aspect, I think. 
we, we, we didn't have that kind of um, skills from there. So we had to outsource that. Um, and then I think one other thing that we, <clears throat> we wanted is to build local capacity. So we had to identify um, some partner within, within the country that could, could also be incorporated into these developments. So in this case, we had um, a, um, um, a private company, I think, which, which, um, which had um, 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 some developers. Um, so they were supposed to work hand in hand with um, um, uh, the main developers that were doing the system to ensure that if there's anything that would require further customization or further um, uh, tweaking, they should be able to do, to do that. Um, I think the rest of um, the skill set they should be available at the Ministry of Health, things like, um, um, I think, server administrations, we still have those people uh, managing those servers and, and the like. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Paul. John, was that the same case in Tanzania? Are you able to add something, give us a Tanzanian experience? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, actually, in Tanzania, yeah, so as the approach is, was not uh, that much different from the one that was uh, used in Zambia. Yeah, but for Tanzania, uh, uh, as I said during the presentation, uh, uh, after vendor was selected, uh, they were supposed to collaborate with uh, a local company. Uh, so, uh, but from the ministry uh, perspective, uh, development, I mean, there was no uh, skilled people who could perform uh, development. Uh, but for uh, server administration, yeah, there we are. But yeah, so uh, local company was, uh, was capacitated to gain some of the skills to provide immediate support. Uh, so uh, whenever support is needed, uh, we didn't have to uh, Sorry, John, it looks like we're, we're losing you. Go direct and ask support from, uh, those support from, uh, from local vendor. But now, yeah, now we, we have, uh, I think, uh, uh, in few, I mean, uh, months ago. Uh, hello. Yes, we can hear you. Now we can hear you. You were breaking. You were talking about a few months ago. It looks like we've uh, just dropped him, but I thought, I think... Um, <laughs> Maybe just to add on what John is trying to say is that at the moment, I think Tanzania has some developers um, who are actually getting into, into this, uh, this thing. So I think that's a plus for Tanzania. Oh, excellent. That's yeah, wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm back. Sorry, my connection was not that good. Okay. Um, thank you so much, John. Um, there was another question from um, before. I've seen Rahim has had his hand up, but before I get to him, let me just uh, uh, mention one question. There was, uh, let me read out one question. It came from Adil, and I think it was addressed to Paul again. He's, um, well, Adil is saying that in Zambia, do vaccinators do growth monitoring? And is this function, or is this function used more in more advanced health facilities? Vaccinators uh, and uh, health and the growth monitoring? Yes, thank you very much for that question. Yes, so um, the, the vaccinators basically, yes, do, um, do growth monitoring. So um, I think the, the workflow from the facility perspective is that they have, um, they have, um, they first do the nutritional aspect, but they do the weights. And if there's anything that needs further, uh, further checks, uh, um, usually, the, the children are referred to uh, to the nutritionist. Also, okay. yes. Um, otherwise, um, the vaccines are, are able to do. Uh, they, they actually do do both. Thank you so much. Maybe now I can go to. I've seen uh, Rahim has really been waving his hand. Rahim, maybe we can unmute you so that you ask your question. Uh, I'm Rahim Abbas from Tanzania. I say thank you for your presentation. But I was not happy 
because of so many excuses of ICT infrastructure. But for me, I think it's poor accountability. Do you learn anything from Vietnam Immunization Legacy webinar? Because they have a good collaboration between telecommunication operator and PATH in Vietnam. But, in, but I don't know the relationship between telecommunication operators of Tanzania, Ministry of Health of Tanzania, and the path of Tanzania. I want to know the relationship and why you are depend open source, you don't have your own tools like uh, uh, Vietnam. Okay. Um, John, John, did you get to hear that uh, question? from uh, Abasi, where he's uh, asking about um, the relationship between uh, the telecommunications um, in Tanzania and uh, PATH, so that you don't, Tele you, get op you don't get open source. In Vietnam, Lisa, in yeah, Vietnam, like, yeah, 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 they, like are in Vietnam, they are, huh? they are yeah, the, collaboration between the VHL yes. in Vietnam and the PATH. Uh -huh. But in, in Tanzania, yes. we have a private company, Vodacom, Tigo. But I don't know if they are, they are, they are, they are, they are in communication with the Minister of Health and, the, and this, partner, this partner party in solve the problem of, in, of health. John, John. Yeah, thank you for your question. Uh, yeah, actually, there is a, yeah, there is a, a good collaboration. Uh, between uh, uh, ministry with uh, telecommunication companies uh, where there are some of the projects uh, like uh, uh, sending, uh, I mean, uh, for instance, there is uh, one of the projects uh, for registering uh, birth notification uh, in the country. Uh, ministry is working uh, together with, uh, with uh, uh, TIGO, uh, one of the uh, company ISP who provide, uh, I mean, one of the telecommunication country uh, providing the country. So uh, I think uh, uh, there is also uh, one of the projects uh, that uh, I think Dal is working on with in collaboration with PATH, uh, where uh, I think there is uh, some of the uh, some of the discussion that is uh, going on uh, to be able to partner with uh, 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 with uh, uh, ISPs uh, in the country. I, I think uh, so far the uh, relationship is good between uh, 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 ISPs and and, 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 MO, and the ministry uh, in the country. Excellent. I think that's a very it's, it's, it's a good way to go. It's a very important to bring on board um, the the you know the telecoms uh, companies uh, because we're talking about. Um, digital health solutions and um, we're glad that uh, you're heading um, that direction. Any other questions? Anybody raising a hand? Abasi, was that well answered? Uh, somehow because they, uh -huh. they, are out, they outsource a lot of work from abroad. Like a ah, Canada, you okay. see. But in Vietnam, they have a telecommunication operator. You see, of telecommunication operator, they are software developer. They are competent people because I have experience of Vietnam. Vietnam, they have a, a branch in Tanzania called Alotel. But mm -hmm. in Tanzania, there is no communication. I, I look on COVID 19. COVID 19, there are communication between ministry and the telecommunication operator. You get a message, use this and see what you are in. But mm -hmm. when you come to this, uh, this program like immunization, there's no any communication. Past work is yourself, Ministry of, of, Ministry of West work is yourself, the communication, they don't know anything, what is going on in the feeding area. So they are poor infrastructure, and nothing is going on. Okay, thank you. So yes, I think that is well noted. And uh, Richard um, did, uh, John Richard did mention just now that there is some, uh, you know, uh, uh, communication that has been going on in the back and they are actually working um they are working together and it's probably you know like uh, work work in progress thank you very much i don't know if there are any other questions i think we've gone slightly um a few minutes beyond uh, time any burning questions before we wind up
All right. It looks like um, there are no more questions, but um, just feel free um, in case you have any questions that um, you might you might want to pose to the to the speakers uh, for today, and um, that can be done through our Google Groups. Would like to thank you very very much for taking time away from uh, your busy schedules to join us in this um, very educative and very informative uh, uh, presentation. And we also like to thank our speakers uh, for that uh, presentation, because I think there was a lot of um, uh, demand um, in the past from countries who wanted to learn, you know, more about um, these electronic um, immunization registries and, um, you know, learn from uh, the two countries and, um, you know, how they went about, um, you know, the technological uh, s solutions. And um, let me take this opportunity just to let you know that uh, we've, um, I'll reiterate this, that uh, we did record um, this uh, video, I mean, this uh, webinar, and that uh, we will definitely share with you and uh, the slides as well. So please feel free uh, to get in touch with us in the event that, um, you know, after you've watched uh, uh, a replay of the whole webinar and uh, you've got any particular questions, please just feel free to get in touch uh, uh, with us and uh, so that we can continue this, uh, you know, discussion on the various uh, platforms uh, that we have, um, particularly those that are showing on your, on your screen. Are you able to see? Yeah. So we thank you very much for connecting with us. And uh, those, those are the various platforms where you can get information and where you can share information. Um, would, for us to continue with these uh, discussions, you can get into our... Um, you know, Google Groups platform so that we can continue the discussion. So for now, thank you very much, everyone. And um, until next time, but for us to see this next time, let's continue to stay safe from COVID-19.